there's this like very real question that if Wendy Williams and Britney Spears are so sick, why are they working? So Wendy Williams has been in the news lately as Lifetime just released a four part documentary series um, that I believe the intention of which was to document her comeback to TV. That was what she wanted. But it actually documented this really visual and sad unraveling of her TV career, COVID, the losses she experienced, and the concerns her family members had around who was a, who is around her, who was around her, and kind of simultaneously this financial guardianship um, and actual guardianship that has been put in place by the courts in New York City. What guardianships are is a legal mechanism by which family members, concerned loved ones, banks um, can petition a court to appoint a person, either a family member, a friend, or an entity, or an outside person like a lawyer or a private firm to manage the finances and the legal decisions that an individual makes because the argument is that they are not capable of safely making those decisions for themselves. And what is safe, right? So maybe the arguments are that they are, they can't prudently control or, or um, handle their money, or maybe people are taking advantage of them. Um, maybe they are not making decisions of sound mind. Maybe they're putting themselves or loved ones at risk. Um, or maybe they are not making medical decisions that are in their best interest. In fact, maybe they're making decisions that are putting them in harm's way. With the Britney Spears case, we saw little snippets of it as the guardianship um, was ended, right? That um, Britney Spears' dad had total control over Britney Spears' finances, but also her medical care, her social care, and where and how she spent her time. In Wendy Williams' case, it's a little different as far as we know. Wells Fargo was the bank that where Wendy Williams did the majority of her banking. They petitioned the courts in New York for a financial guardian to be put in place that was not her family. Um, prior to this, um, her son Kevin, allegedly, and her, her sister and her niece um, were caring for her in Miami and helping with um, taking care of her. And allegedly, we don't know this for a fact, um, money was taken out of Wendy Williams' account by by her son. Um, there, We don't know this to be a fact, but in the amount of around $100,000, and potentially that's why Wells Fargo um, moved to petition the court for guardianship and that the guardianship not be family members. And what came out through this documentary series is this very sad series of events that, you know, her son is incredibly worried about his mom um, and that he was supported by his mom for his entire life and, according to him, never used money without her, permi without her permission. She talked multiple times in the show about how she just wanted her money to go to her son. The family, her family is very concerned that the people around her, so her manager, her publicist, are pushing her to work. Again, this idea of who has control, who has access, right? These are people that are put in place by the guardianship. And are they, are they encouraging Wendy Williams to work when she's not capable of working or it's not in her best interest? And so there are allegations both ways. We don't know who the guardian is. It's never identified um, who the exact person is. And the family has no direct way to communicate with the guardian for a period of time. I think towards the end, they are communicating and that the guardianship might be up for reevaluation this year. But the kind of questions that arise from the documentary are, are, are profound, right? Who has the power to control someone else's decisions? What if a loved one is making decisions that are decidedly not in their best interest? So in Wendy Williams' case, there are allegations um, in visual demonstrations of her alcohol abuse and her not eating. Like there's a lot about her not having any food in her apartment. She's visually lost a ton of weight. She has lots of medical conditions, including lymphedema in her feet, which make her very unstable on her feet. And so this kind of 
very real physical and mental and emotional unraveling of a public figure. And at what point does another entity come in and take control? And what do we want our society to do in that situation? And I think in most situations where adults are either struggling to take care of themselves temporarily or permanently, um, and a guardianship is an appropriate decision, I'm not saying it is or it isn't in Wendy Williams' case, but in the majority of cases, these individuals have no money. Um, so typically it is about well-being, right? Where's a safe place for this person to live? Who's going to be making sound medical decisions? Yada, yada. Most people in this country don't have money. Um, I think there's this other question that arises when the subject of the guardianship is a person of a lot of means, like Wendy Williams. And is there an incentive by people either petitioning for the guardianship or people around that person as they are in the guardianship to keep them under the guardianship? And so I think there's this very real concern with a system like the guardianship system, which is similar in many ways to a system like the child welfare system or the juvenile justice system that is shrouded in secrecy. A lot of these proceedings are under seal, meaning we don't have access, like the public doesn't have access to the petition, the details of the petition, who the guardian is. And there are public policy reasons for that and safety reasons for that. But the downside to that is that there are very few checks and balances. You know, in a court of law, in criminal cases, for example, those are open proceedings. Anyone can access a police report. Hearings are typically open to the public. And so there's some level of transparent, a very real level of transparency. In these cases, there's no transparency. And so they're really rife and vulnerable for folks taking advantage of the system. And I think we see that being pl played out kind of in real time around Wendy Williams. So Wendy Williams was this charismatic, incredibly successful radio host turned TV host who had 14 seasons, 13 seasons of a talk show, but also lots of rumors about issues around substance use and physical ailments. Um, had some episodes on TV. She fainted on TV. There was a very public and messy divorce that she went through with her husband who impregnated another woman. So it was very embarrassing. Um, and so people, like she became like celebrity news fodder. I think the other thing about this case in particular that's similar to the Britney Spears case that was so disturbing to me that the subjects of the guardianship, so both Wendy and Brittany, feeling like they had nothing without their celebrity. And so this idea, I mean, you saw it in this Wendy Williams documentary series. Like she just kept saying, like, I just want to be on TV. I just want to be on TV. I just like it when people recognize me. I just want to take pictures. I just want to go to restaurants where they're paparazzi. I just want to. And how sad that was to see, right? This woman who, by all measures, has had an incredibly successful life, both professionally and personally, right? She has like an amazing family. She had an incredible career. She has a really sweet son. She has a really sweet nephew, a really sweet niece, like really clearly a family that loves her. She's had a ton of success. And, you know, we've talked about this a little bit on the podcast too, this idea of like when your identity becomes so enmeshed with your job and then your job doesn't exist in that way anymore, this total loss of identity. And then like put on top of that, the guardianship where it seemed like, you know, Wendy was unhappy with it, but also everyone was unhappy with it, but no one was able to get to a resolution that seemed to meet everyone's needs. And so I think my, my biggest kind of, I don't even know if criticism is the right word, but like thought about it is, would there be, a be would it be a better solution to have more transparency and to have more access to information? Uh, understanding that people's health information is HIPAA, HIPAA 
covered, right? And I think for Wendy, it's like particularly complicated because she has now come out and says she has um, frontal lobe dysphagia, so so a form of dementia. Um, it's unclear if it was caused or has some causal relationship with her substance use disorder or her Graves disease or like how that is all connected. I am not a medical professional, but it, it seems like there might be some connection. But, you know, I think there was a lot of time where she did not want to share all that information with the public, which obviously is her right. I think the concern is that when no one knows what's going on, are the people that are in control having your best interests at heart? And how do you check that? And is there a way to do it better? So I think just some questions. I think, you know, I'd like to keep talking about this. I think there will be more news about Wendy Williams now that the documentary series is out and the guardianship is up for renewal or reevaluation in 2024. Um, it seems as though she's still in some sort of facility and whether she leaves that facility, where does she go? But I think these are questions that have clear downstream impacts beyond Wendy Williams. I think also kind of keeping an eye on what happens or what goes on, what is going on with Britney Spears, um, who's now no longer under a guardianship. Um, I was quoted um, in a piece that is airing, I believe, February 29th. Um, so this episode is coming out March 4th. So we will link the Marketplace episode um, as well, which evaluates the pros, cons, harms of financial guardianships. Um, and what, as a, what, what can we do? Can we make them better? There's this like very real question that if Wendy Williams and Britney Spears are so sick, why are they working, right? So if they need to be under a guardianship, maybe we could agree that then they shouldn't be working because they're, they're, they can't take care of themselves. So there's that question. But then there's also this question that, I don't know, like what if Wendy Williams just wants to spend her money the way she wants to spend her money? It's her money. And what if she wants to give her kid $100,000 or buy him a penthouse? I don't know. Like, I just don't think we, we police men's money the same way. No one's, no one's like criticizing, um, well, no one's really criticizing Jeff Bezos for like trying to go to the moon or Elon Musk for whatever. Or I, I'm not saying that the individuals that we've talked about are, aren't struggling. But I think there is this question about what right do we have to make decisions for other people and who gets to make them and like at what point is someone really at risk? I think there, there, there were very clear indications both in the documentary and testimony from incidents prior to the documentary that, that Wendy Williams had some very near misses. Um, with like overdoses or, or, you know, there was like a, one of her managers was talking about finding her and her needing a blood transfusion and having to go to the hospital. And like, so there, there is this question about when you're at a risk to yourself or others, which to me is a different question than a guardianship, right? So, so like if there's an immediate risk, like maybe there does need to be an immediate intervention, but at what point does that intervention stop? And why are these guardianships going on for so long? Um, and are there other ways to help people manage their money that don't cause so much chaos? Um, like there was one scene in the documentary where she had like $15,000 in cash just like lying around her bedroom. Um, and her manager said, you know, Wendy, you can't keep cash like this. It's dangerous. And she's like, right, but if I put it in the bank, they'll take it. And so this idea, right, that this woman who by all accounts is very wealthy, she like, and has no access to her money and also, it's not safe for her to move in the world like an average person. And so there's like a lot of talk 
and visuals of her just sitting alone in this like massive apartment in New York and talking about how, you know, her just it would make anyone miserable and lonely. And I, I just, you have to question kind of, is the system doing right by the people it's supposed to protect? Thanks for listening to Justice. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to learn more about our podcast, be sure to check us out on our website at justicepodcast.com. You can also reach out to us there if you want to be featured on the show or if you have a business or a product that you think would be a good fit for our audience. Thanks again for listening. <laughs>